You have also come here, Excellency, the President of the Republic of Iran. Los engaños de Sanjo que te puso, no vale ni uno, no vale ni nada. This intake graduating today speaks volumes about the best military training school, Kawaweta, and the approach to the training. Of Sakades of intake 18 of 23, 24 long, began their training of 17th of July last year, and amongst whom were UPDF in service cadets, cadets from internal security organization, cadets from external security organization, fraternal cadets from Republic of Mali, and fraternal cadets from the Republic of Tanzania, totaling to 806. But today, we are going to witness only 777 who have completely and successfully completed their course. Today, 4th of June, 24th, we, the best military training school Kawaweta community, share the joy for the achievement as we present to you 774 officer cadets, of whom are 101 female cadets who have successfully completed their training. And it's my honor congratulate the proud cadets for standing the hardships and finish their course. The core objectives of the course was to reflect the three key elements in the training and the education of young officers. And that was moral. We looked at character. And Your Excellence, I just want to say to you that these cadets have achieved it. It is my great honor to stand before you today and share with you this most special day as you commission and become future leaders of our great army and the armies of our close allies. I know how hard you have all worked over the past year and I hope you are proud of your achievements. Of course, you would not be here without the support of your family and friends, we are delighted that they can join you today. This moment marks a significant milestone in your military careers. Having attended and survived a commissioning course like this 25 years ago, I think I have an idea of what you have gone through. All officers who have completed a commissioning course like this one have experienced the exhaustion, the fear, the self-doubt, and the anxiety 
that comes with a grueling course like this. However, what you remember most as the years go by are the friendships forged through the hardships and the humor you all would have experienced in the most trying times. As you step into your roles as commissioned officers, remember that leadership is not merely a position, but a profound responsibility. You are entrusted with the lives of those under your command, the security of our nation, and the upholding of the highest standards of integrity, discipline, and professionalism. In every decision you make, let the principles of duty, honor, and love of country guide you. Be steadfast in your commitment to serve and protect, to lead by example, and to inspire those around you. Your actions will shape the future of our defense forces and contribute to the peace and stability of our nation and continent. Embrace the challenges ahead with courage and resilience. In times of adversity, your strength and wisdom will be the beacon that guides your soldiers. Foster a spirit of unity and camaraderie, for it is through teamwork and mutual respect that we achieve greatness. Remember, leadership is about service. Your Excellency, sir, the composition of the, the, composition of the officer cadet intake as it is drawn from the different African countries and the presence of dignitaries from various nations underscores what you have always emphasized, modern security and defense challenges are not confined by borders. They therefore require a unified response, one that transcends national boundaries and fosters international cooperation. Joint trainings promote a common understanding and approach to international and cross-border security challenges such as terrorism, natural disasters. Uh, to the graduates, I would like to congratulate you. As the commander stated, you have undergone rigorous training, overcome numerous challenges, and displayed commitment to the ideals of service and duty. You have proven yourselves worthy of the trust and responsibility that comes with leadership. And you should thank God, because you started as a big number, and you're lucky that you're among the few that have been able to conclude. I congratulate the new officers. Congratulations. Congratulations on finishing a tough course. In our training here, we try to expose the, the, the young, the, all the trainees to, to the realities of combat. In the past, they used to separate phases of training, but when we discussed, we decided that at an early stage, the officer should be exposed to the multidimensional nature of warfare. That's why I, that's why I hear that uh, Brigadier Walimba was reporting that you went to Kabamba, to Karama, for a combined arms exercise. That's what I, I advised them, because in the past they used to separate uh, to limit the trainee to only the battalion support weapons 
I said, no, this is not a good idea. Let them know from the beginning. So I congratulate you. And as General Mohon, CDF of Uganda told you, it's not part of the problem of the African armies. They look at army as a job, as, as, as a job, as Kazi, Chibarua, Kwajiriwa. Army, according to us, is not a job. It is a cause to defend, like you defend, is it defending your home, a job? Suppose I have my children, my wife, a thief comes, I must defend my home. Now, is that a job? When I defend my family from a thief, a thief is trying to invade my house, I defend them. It's not a job. It is an obligation. But the issue is that fighting is not a job. It is a cause. If you start from there, you, you are not going to go wrong. So therefore, you young, you young people come knowing that don't bring a careerist mentality in, the, in our army. A careerist, careerism, a job, job, jobism. No, this is a cause. Of course, in the army, Eventually, when, when we took government, we had to pay, but we, for a long time, we were paying low salaries. Actually, from 1987 until recently, we were paying low salaries. Because if we pay high salaries, how could we afford? We couldn't afford. If we pay high salaries, how could we support a big army like we have, especially at that time? Now we have moved a little bit. We are paying slightly better now than that time. But General Mozi will have now to take care of what we had wanted to do, but it was not done. Although we are getting low salaries, we had arranged that the welfare of the, of the soldiers should be looked after. The welfare. The minimum welfare of the soldier. And what is this? Number one, food. Number two, accommodation. Building barracks. So that soldiers don't stay in rented houses, they don't stay in... Uh, They stay in government free houses. Yes, I'm getting a low salary, but I'm staying in a free government house. So there is no, no problem on me on, on, on housing. I'm not paying rent. It is a free house. Army schools. We insisted that there should be army schools, primary, a primary school near each battalion, and a secondary school in each brigade area. So that my children, I am I'm a soldier, I'm getting a small pay, because my country can't, can't afford to have a big pay, but my child is studying free in an army school. So I don't have that pressure of having to pay for my children in, government, in private schools or, 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 or what. Uh -huh. So if you, if you handle the housing collectively, collectively, you handle the education of the, of the soldiers' children, then you, 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 you handle the, the health, the health they are using, the, the army health infrastructure. Uh, what other pressure does the soldier have to, to, to make him want for money now, 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 now. So therefore, 
that system was started in the army, but somehow it was not fully operational. So the housing, school infrastructure for soldiers, children, health infrastructure, and then for soldiers' wives, we assisted to do some, some economic production around, around the, near their cantonments. They, they can do weaving, small industries by them, by these, these, these wives of soldiers, so that they also get income without d disturbing the Oh! <laughs> 